Well, good to see you again today. This is Spotlight. I'm Pastor Dan. Thanks for being with us. I, it just is a blessing to me that we have this, this little connection with a group of my friends around the world. And we're on a theme for Christmas about the God who comes. And we're going to move down to the story of Abraham. And I think you probably know the story in uh, Genesis 22. It's not an easy story. God comes to Abraham in the middle of the night and says, I want you to sacrifice your son. And Abraham heads out. He takes his son. They walk the three days. They go to the top of the mountain. Every minute is torture. Every minute is the last with him. This golden boy, the, the son of your dreams, the son of the promise. How can you be the father of a great nation if uh, you lose your son? And then comes the moment, of course, of uh, putting his son on the altar and coming down with the knife. And then God says, no, okay, no, no, no. Now I know that you will, will not even hold back your own son from me. And they find a ram and they put the ram in and sacrifice the substitute. There are many ways to see the story. There's a lot of debate. Read Matthew Corpman's article in uh, Adventist Today. It's not an easy article. There's lots of different viewpoints. But let's just take this story as it reads, is that God wanted to know that uh, Abraham would understand when it came time for God the Father to give his son what it would be like. And that God is the one who always provides a substitute. But God came. God came in the call and God came in offering the substitute and saying it's enough. God used his voice. I don't know how to understand this story completely. I have two sons, 30 and 28. I had to wait a long time for those sons. We just were together for Thanksgiving. If I had to give up one of my sons in order to keep you or anyone from hell, you'd have to go to hell, because I'm not. I can't, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. God did. Can we just go over some, some ideas, I think? Number one, God has feelings. He is not just this rock. He is a person. He is like us. He is not just wind or fire or some uh, depersonalized uh, force in the world, like Einstein's God. He has feelings, and he thinks, and he feels, and he acts, and it's hard for him giving his son. Number two, there are those who think God is sort of an autopilot, the fact that God has certain a character and who he is, that he couldn't sin, he couldn't be unselfish. This is what he has to do. It's what he is. And I think that cheapens the choices that God makes. These are choices. He did not have to create the world. He is not driven to do this. He chooses to create. He chooses not to create. To offer his son is not automatic. He had a choice whether to do that or not. These are choices that God makes. And I think we, we have to honor those choices. What that says about future and looking into the future and all that is for another time. But let's just put an anchor down and say these are real choices and God didn't have to do them and he could have done the opposite. And that's why it's so amazing and that's why it's the greatest love because it was a choice. It's always a choice. Number three, yes, God finds his own substitute. Jesus is not someone that we find and we offer to God. It is someone that God himself brings to us. All the other pagan religions, people have to find offerings and sacrifices and give up hard things and offer it to God. Not ours. Not ours. Jesus is God's gift to us. If you have a chance to read Steps to Christ, page 13, after I dug all this out, I said, wow, there it is all the time. The cross didn't change the heart of God. The cross shows the heart of God. It is because of the heart of God. That God provided a substitute for Abraham's son. And number four, maybe learn to hear the voice of God. With all the different viewpoints of what happened here, I'm just going to say, I think it was God, and I think Abraham knew that it was God. He knew the voice of God. He'd been living with God. He is a friend of God's. And when God says, go sacrifice your son, he doesn't understand it, but he knows it's the voice of God. When he wanted God to talk for a while, there was some silence. Yes, God does, does go into silent mode sometimes to make us learn faith. 
see if we will be faithful to him even when there are no voices coming. But God was there. And he had a perfect timing. There was no way he was going to let Abraham go all the way through with that. And in the perfect moment, the voice came. And when we need not an audible voice, learn to pick out that voice of God in our lives. Stop. Go. Stop. I have another one for you. As God interprets the world around us to make sense for us, learn to pick out the inaudible, still, small voice of God as we become more and more friends of God. This is the Spotlight. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching Spotlight. We're so excited about this. We hope that you'll subscribe and so you'll get all of them. And please just forward it on to others and tell other people about it. And let's just see what kind of an audience we can get for these messages of Spotlight. God bless you.